This morning, I want to have a word of prayer, and I'm going to share a message with you. Dear Heavenly Father, which are in heaven, dear Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, dear Father, for your grace, and Lord, for waking us and giving us this day. Bless us, O Heavenly Father, that we may exalt your praise, and Lord, we may do your will to please you, dear Father, in all our doing. Bless us according to your grace, in Christ's name, amen. amen. <clears throat> this morning, we want to be looking at a subject called the duty of the congregation in the Day of Atonement, diseases, cause, and prevention. And this is so vital for us in this closing moments of earth history to know our duty. Uh, we have a duty to, to give, to render to God, and that is to preserve this body in the best possible condition. It's going to take an effort, a mighty effort, to be able to perform that. With all the temptations that we're faced with every day, uh, we're going to have to wrestle day and night to overcome these besetting problems. God made it very clear. You need clear, energetic minds in order to appreciate the exalted character of truth, to value the atonement, and to place right excellence upon eternal things. The only way you can really reflect the character of God, the only way you can exemplify this character, is to really have energetic minds. And it's going to take eating and living and performing all those lifestyle changes in order to perform that. The reason we're struggling so hard is because we have walked away from God. And God will have us to render ourselves to him. And if we would do that, then God would direct us in every way possible. Uh, the, the thing that I really want to convey is that our habits of life is what caused so much problem for us. And if we would simply follow those principles that God has laid out, then it wouldn't be so difficult to perform. Uh, the word of God has given requirements and directions necessary that will guide us through these pitfalls of life and prepare us for the finishing word. Excuse me, just a minute. He just cleared my screen. Okay. In Genesis, the ninth chapter, verse one, God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Uh, be fruitful and multiply. How can I remove that? And every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herbs have I given you all things but flush with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require you. In other words, God is letting us know that he gave us a beautiful diet, fruits, grains, nuts, uh, it was given to a perfect man. And it was only after the fall that God gave man vegetables. Vegetables was not an apple fall but it was a provision made by God to enable man to reform back to a perfect diet. So in other words, the vegetables added to the diet as a medicine to restore him back. But God gave us a forcible warning in the verse four, it said, but flush the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And God meant every word of that. 
and surely your blood of your lives will not require the hand of every beast will I require it. God is simply telling us that if we eat the animal flesh with the blood, he will require our life by that very beast that we have killed and eaten. And we can see that today more and more. And Isaiah, the 66th chapter, verse 15, God makes it plain again. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like whirlwind and render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by the sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine flesh, abomination, and the mouth shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Now, as you see that, God is making it plain that if we are eating anything with swine in it, it's an abomination, and it shall be consumed. We're going to see the day that we all are in trouble because God has designated and has made it possible that ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God want a living tabernacle and man, that he may tabernacle in the soul and the body of man. But there's another one that is contending for the body of man. In Jude, the first chapter, verse 9, we see, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Doest not bring against him a railing accusation, says the Lord, rebuke thee. In other words, the devil claimed the body of Moses because Moses had sinned, and, and he said, he's mine. He has transgressed, he has violated, and he's mine. But God contended and said that he had freed Moses from his guilt. He has taken on his sins. I believe that the devil will contend for our body also. If he can keep us unworthy of the blessings of God, listen to this, uncleanness. The tish of the swine swarms with parasites of the swine. God said, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, not touch their dead coffers. This commandment was given because swine flesh is unfit for food. Swine scavengers uh, are scavengers. This is the only use they was intended to serve. Never under any circumstance was their flesh to be eaten by human beings. Never under any circumstance. That's the Council on Diocese Food, page 392. So there's no circumstance where we should be eating the carcass of a swine or anything that is unclean. But we're faced with a big dilemma because this swine is everywhere. Everything we touch, everything that we eat is inundated with this swine. And we're going to see that today. And not only him, but many other unclean things. Everything but his pork. There are many products that come from the pig. Pork is the most widely consumed meat in the world. People eat many different pork products, such as bacon, sausages, pork chops. You may grill pork ribs in the summer, or you may enjoy a Christmas ham. There's about 250 pounds to an average size swine. About 150 pounds of it is, is used, you know, it's consumed. So nearly the whole swine is consumed in various ways. Uh, medicine is made from it, including insulin. Now that's synthetic version, and also animal versions of insulin. And when do we know the difference? Most of the time you don't know, you just know you need insulin. Now I'm not saying that you stop taking insulin, but I think that you need to be educated enough to know that some of the insulin that depended the upon is made from swine. Remember now, God said, to touch it. Some of the shoes that we wear are made from swine. Some of the clothes and some of the byproducts is made from the swine. Swine byproducts are also important parts of products such as water filters, insulation, rubber, antifreeze, certain plastic, wax, crayon, chalk, adhesive, fertilizer. 
lard fat is is one of the most widely used products for using for shaving creams and soap and makeup, baking goods and other food products. We, we're not gonna get around it. We're gonna have to have the Holy Spirit to direct us because the devil has laid a well-devised plot to ensnare God's people so he can claim us for his own. Uh, so once again, if we are not directed by the word of God and it's not prayerfully following his word, he will be ensnared. Do you know that chopped pink pancreas may not sound appetizing, but most cystic fibrosis patients eat a refined version of it. Each of preference, lunch and dinner, and they need it. In order to be able to maintain, they have to eat it encapsulated or capsules, capsules in order to be able to function. Pills, pills are life sustaining for most of nearly 30,000 people in the United States with cystic fibrosis. And it don't stop there. A lot of our soaps are made from, uh, from the fat of swine. Many of our toothpaste is made from pine, from, from the swine. Do you know that every time you touch the computer, there's a big chance that you're touching the swine? The tiny little bar batteries that we use for different type of uh, electrical components, the fat that they use to put these batteries together is made from the swine fat. Vaccines that we solely depend upon to fight infections and diseases. Many of them are made from chickens and monkeys and pigs. A lot of our food that we eat, our croissants, nearly all of them are made from the swine. A lot of your breakfast foods, uh, Rice Krispie treats and so on, they too are made from the swine. Many of your delicious tasting cakes and like your blueberry cheesecakes, they're made from beef fat. But just Sara Lee, uh, uh, cherry cream pies, uh, uh, cheesecakes, they're made from the beef fat. You know, I remember I used to love some French silk pies. I mean, it's just melting your mouth. Then found out to later that it also had pork in it. And one of the most delicious tasting treats is a coconut cream pie. Believe it or not, it's saturated with pork. Mm. And what about just simple chewing gum? You know, I searched and searched to see if I could find some chewing gum that would be worthy to chew. Every type of chewing gum I searched had pork in it. Lucky Charm cereals, they too has pork in them. And then today we need hand sanitizers to protect us against the coronavirus and so on. But a lot of the hand sanitizers has pork fat in A lot of our lotions and deodorants and toiletries also has pork in it. And your peppers ribs on uh, layer cake has pork in it. Mm -hmm. And what it even happens, brother. Take a listen to this. Then on. Hot flashes? Then something else comes on. If menopausal symptoms are disrupting your or life. Premarin is approved to treat symptoms and prevent bone loss. If you don't have symptoms, consider non-estrogen treatment instead of an estrogen like Premarin to prevent bone loss. Premarin should not be used to prevent and may increase the risk of heart disease, heart attack, stroke, or dementia, and may increase the risk of breast cancer and blood clots. So use it for the shortest time based on goals and risks. If you have a uterus, estrogen increases the risk of uterine cancer. I'm soaked. I'm dry. I'm cold. I'm hot. I'm not. My doctor prescribed Premarin. Premarin is not right for every woman. Just Discuss its use regularly with your doctor. Don't use Premarin if you've had unusual vaginal bleeding, 
Test for uterine cancer, blood clots, liver problems, stroke or heart attack, or think you're pregnant. Side effects may include vaginal yeast infections, leg and abdominal cramps. With five dosage strengths of Premarin, your doctor can choose the lowest effective dose for you. Isn't it time you ask about Premarin? I'm so ready. Many women may be because of menopausal problem, and this drug will give them some relief. But are you aware that Premarin is made from horse urine, pregnant horse urine. Once again, it is a necessary a drug that makes life a lot more pleasant, but because the urine of pregnant horses are saturated with estrogen, it gives them temporary relief from the hot flashes, anxieties, attacks. But remember, the next time you take your estrogen replacement drug, it's a good possibility it's made from horse urine. Mm -mm. Also, a lot of our bakery goods are cooked in lard. And uh, many of our uh, cookies and candy also are cooked with lard. <coughs> and uh, all these things are there, and many of them we are not even aware of it. True. Something as simple as sweet and low has swine fat in it. And your coffee mate that you begin your morning with, it too has swine in it. And your Kellogg cornflake cereals, uh, it has beef in it. And many of us are claiming to be vegetarians, to be vegans. And every day we are filling our stomach with contamination and abomination under a clever disguised plan of the devil mm. to keep us unfit for the atonement. Fruit Loops, it has pork in it. These are specially designed for our children. And yet, not to our awareness, they also have swine in it. Frosty Mini Spooners has pork in it. Golden Cup. It has unclean fish in it, anchovies. Now you wonder, you said, why would they put fish in breakfast cereals? It don't enhance the taste. What is the purpose? It's a master plan to keep God's people unclean. A big bowl of instant oatmeal, apple and cinnamon flavor has anchovies in it, unclean fish. The same can be said from the maple brown sugar flavor, uh, quicker oats. It has the anchovies in it also. And your variety pack, it gives you quite a variety, but it's one component is always the same. Each one of them has the swine in it. Your boar RDs, raviolis, they has swine in them. And look, I really did my best to try to find you a good, decent cheese, but I failed miserably. Every cheese product I found had pork in it. Everyone. And I looked through all of them. Your Rocky Road uh, ice cream, it has pork in it. Your Horizon Parmesan cheese, it has beef and pork. Your Kraft Singles, uh, cheese slice. It has beef and pork in it. And it just contains all these cheeses. I checked, found out they all have pork in it. Then I wanted to find there's got to be something that is free of the contamination of unclean animals and pork and anchovies. And then I looked at Similac, a baby formula. I thought surely uh, they would not have these uh, life destroying properties in them. And yes, true enough, Similac has pork in it. And then for our dear brothers and sisters that love to eat beef but refuse to eat pork, you know that a lot of our beef bacon has pork, pork additives in them. And this is one that really, one of the last one that really gave me some trouble was Pergo. You know, I mean, it's nothing like being able to go to the supermarket, buy your big job, pre-made uh, tomato sauce, Italian sauce, 
and put it on your spaghetti or your salad. And it's quick, very delicious. Found out that Prego has pork in it. Lipton tea, as bad as it might be, I'm going to make it a little worse. Lipton tea has pork in it. And be very careful with the different type of noodles. Many of the noodles, the instant uh, prepared noodles, uh, also has shrimp in it. Mm. And this is one that troubled me a little bit. I used to really love rich crackers. You know, I said, boy, what a delicious treat. Found out that rich crackers has pork in it. Mm. And I said, well, OK, I switched to wheat thins. Found out that wheat has pork in it. I said, well, let me switch to honey made uh, graham crackers. Found out they have pork in it. And then if you want to get you some nice ice cream from Bassett Robin, believe it or not, they have pork in it. And then once again, uh, the beech nuts uh, spearmint chewing gum, all has pork in it. The White Castle uh, burgers or whatever it is, they don't have pork. They don't have anchovies, they have duck feathers, mm. uh, which, you know, I don't want duck feathers in my burger. Um, green giant. Jolly green giant, cut up beans, uh, they also has pork in them. And then all of your delicious little gummy bears, uh, many of your gummy bears, candy, the treats we give our children, they, uh, especially the red color one, contain dye made from crushed insects or beetle bugs. Your potato chips, uh, and no one can refuse potato chips, but potato chips are saturated with milk and chicken and many other additives that is not fit for a healthy vegans to eat. And uh, a lot of times we, we are more health conscious today and we want to eat yogurt for the anti, well, for the bacterial uh, properties, uh, the probiotic uh, bacteria in them. Many times when you buy yogurt, if it's got the reddish or yellow color to it, they put that in there to make you think is it saturated with fruit, but not to be the case. Many times the red and light color is from insects, beetle bulbs that's been crushed that gives it a kind of a reddish or yellow color. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like tacos, and, but most of your tacos and uh, wraps has a lot of fat in it. And so I'm at a point with my yogurt, I had to really be careful with yogurt because yogurt, um, they put so many things in it to make it look like it has fruit in it. But in reality, it has a lot of insects and bugs, special beetle bugs that would enhance the color and the flavor of it. McDonald's French fries, it's unfit for vegetarians and vegans. Uh, and this is one that kind of shocked me. Welch's grape jam. Welch's grape jam has pork in it. And also their fruit snacks also has pork in it. And that surprised me. But one that I found that's pretty a staple over in your country is this uh, pork pie. I've never seen pork pie, but it's a jelly pork pie. I don't think none of us are eating that, but I just thought I'd put it there. But here's one that may surprise you. Many say, well, I don't touch swine. I don't eat swine. I'm free from that. But take a look at this. But what about that $5 uh, bill, uh, money that you exchange to buy things with? Do you know that each one of those promissory notes uh, $10, $5, whatever you all call it, it is also has fat derivatives from animals, in particular the swine that is unclean. So in other words, to even print that, it has derivatives from the swine in it. So every time you touch 
a dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, you're touching that swine. Mm. And it's a de well devised plan. This is not just something that just happened. It's not just economics. A lot of it is the well devised plan of the devil to keep us unfit for the day of atonement. Uh, life savers, that's not saving much life. If anything, it's unfitting you for life because it has beef and pork in it. Um, here's another the, uh, one people like, you know, because it's keep your breath smelling fresh. At the same time, it's contaminating your body. It has pork in it. And some of us men, especially those over 50 years old, <clears throat> we are turning to natural substance to fight prostate problems. Do you know that super beta prostate has ostrich shells in it, unclean animals in it? It's unclean, and it's an abomination for God's people to touch it. And it's just continued. Colgate, uh, toothpaste, many of them has unclean uh, animal fat in it. And this is another one, you know, you go to the store and you try to find some really good healthy bread and you read and you search the label and you find one that seemed to be pretty good and you think, well, this is whole wheat and maybe this would work. But many, uh, even of the whole wheat uh, bread, they use pork enzymes in them. So be very careful. Don't depend just on rate, labor reading. You must check the manufacturer. Hey, what about this? Minute made uh, fruit juices. There's no way pork can be found in them. I beg your difference. The following products are unclean. Uh, they have pork in them. Minute made juices, ruby red grape uh, fruit drinks, um, and also your strawberry banana juice. <laughs> they all have pork in them. Starbucks, the Skitters, they too have pork in it. Now listen, now you probably saying, what, what's the purpose of this? Listen what God had to say. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, meat eating will eventually be done away with. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily toward it. So if you preparing for translation, and all of us should, especially Advent believers, Meaning it's going to have to be given up. Now, you probably saying, well, God has given us permission to eat clean meat. That was in the past. But we're in the day of atonement, the day of at one with God. That's the day you restrain from eating un all unclean things. During that 24-hour fast period, they could not eat. We've been in the day of atonement since 1844. We are making speedy preparation for the coming of God when the mind that we have on this earth is the mind that we are taking to the kingdom. That's the only thing we're going to take. If your mind is still on chicken, beef, hamburgers, and junk food, you expect to take that mind into the kingdom? It will not be there. And so it's time for God's people to give up this life-destroying habits. And you're going to see what it's doing to us as a people. God gave us a beautiful diet. Fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. And these diets constitute all the nutrients that we need. It's enough variety that we don't have to lust at the flesh pots of Egypt. Listen to what God said in Deuteronomy 12, chapter verse 15. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, and whatsoever thou so lustest after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof as the robot and of the heart. So God is telling us, look, I have blessed you with resources, but you have the freedom to go and buy and eat whatever you want to eat. You can eat the clean, you can eat the unclean. He says, I will not control your mind. This freedom has given us the liberty to choose rather to eat the abominations instead of being selective in our choices. And this is the detriment to our soul. What about this? White sugar. If you're eating white sugar, you're consuming animal bones. Nearly every one of us are eating some form of white sugar. Mm. 
refined white sugar is bleached in a process that entails running the sugar through bone char. That means they take the dead bones of animals and they purify the sugar with them. No way God will accept that. And one that, that I almost really don't want to share this one with you because I have such an attraction. Uh, I lust for vanilla ice cream. I love vanilla ice cream. But do you know that vanilla ice cream is saturated with beetle juice from the rear end of the beetle, beaver. And uh, the natural flavor you see listed on your favorite vanilla ice cream may actually come from a beaver rear end. Yes, what he does is the beaver will spray and mark his territory. Food scientists noticed the strong smell and they incorporated it into vanilla ice cream. So that attraction that you have vanilla ice cream, it has a lot to give credit to the beaver urine that he excretes from his rear end. Mm. Hey, do you like orange juice? We all do. We all need, must get our omega-3 and we, we need it, okay? Look, I got a surprise for you. If you're drinking orange juice, you also are consuming fish oil and sheep wool. I know you didn't know that, but don't say it on, on the bottle, but uh, orange juice is fortified with uh, anchovies, uh, unclean fish. Orange juice, uh, is fortified with omega-3. That fat is coming from the fat of fish. So just remember that. And the vitamin D is coming from sheep wool. Hey, what about our bananas? All of us, vegetarians, non-vegetarian, all of us, everybody like bananas. You may be liking more than you think. If you're eating bananas, you're consuming shellfish. By the way, shellfish is an unclean animal. Your bananas has crabs, according to science data, a bacteria-fighting compound derived from shrimps and crab shells. So we have no business eating shrimps, uh, crab shells, and you would argue every day saying, no way, I do not eat shrimps, I do not eat crabs, I am I hope they get to the banana. I eat clean food. But if you eat bananas that has been processed, you're well on your way to contaminate yourself with shrimp and crab. What about shrimp and bananas? It has a product there in the UK. It's a bacteria. Uh, it has bacteria fighting uh, elements in it. And it mm. has some good properties, but it also is derived from shrimps and crab shells. So, uh, you might want to stay away from that. You know, I never was in the bagels, but you know, a lot of you probably love it, but I thought I'd just at least let you know what you're eating. If you're eating bagels, you're consuming bird feathers. Now, believe it or not, these mad food scientists have figured out that feathers are so light, and if we could grind it up and put it in dough, we can make our bread much lighter. And so it is enhanced with bird feathers. And by the way, Dunkin' Donuts have both confirmed using L-cysteine in all their bagels. In other words, they're using bird feathers also. McDonald's honey wheat rolls has it in it also. Cinnamon rolls and apple pies, uh, Pizza Hut, they all are using bird feathers in their bread and in their pastries. Now, next time you give your children a uh, sweet treat, remember, most of the sweet treats, especially natural red number four, come from beetle bowl, crushed beetle bowls. And all of you know what is the most favorite pastime for a beetle bowl is to roll dung. That's what he'd rather do all day long, roll balls of dung. Can you think of using his shell on his back to coat our candy? Every day we're doing it and not even aware of it. Now, you know, I travel a lot, so I'm on the plane and 
I'm looking at these people eating beef and pork and fish and all that, and I'm saying, hmm, I could never eat that. It would kill me. And I would get me a bag of peanuts. And I'll just look and look at them and talk about what I'm eating. And I found out later that my peanuts has pig hoof grease in it. Yes, I mean, that's, that's the truth. Do you know that the peanuts, in order to keep the salt on the peanuts, they have to coat it with a grease. Guess what grease they use? Pig hoof grease. Next time you eat peanuts, remember, not just eating the protein from the nuts, eating the protein from the pig. And they're playing with our food so much. Uh, the GMOs are just popping up everywhere. And it's almost dangerous to even think about uh, buying food. And if you like candy, like most of us do, uh, I want you to understand that the FDA food defects action level has permitted a certain amount of rodent droppings. Uh, visible a solid animal waste must not exceed 10 milligrams per pound, or 120 insect fragments per cup, or two rodent hairs per cup. So they got to measure it out that you can have a certain amount, but it shouldn't go over that. In other words, they figure that 120 insect fragments won't hurt nobody, and 10 milligrams of waste from animals, it's not bad, it won't hurt you at all. My dear brothers, let me give you a little something here. I know we all got our little sweetheart we love, and we like to buy them candy, especially in special days like Valentine's. And listen to this. A study was done to uncover the amount of rat feces in various brands of chocolate that Americans, especially American women, eat. The emphasis was placed on women and chocolate because the study was done weeks before Valentine's Day which is a day of great exchange of chocolate. The end results of the study was aired on a major news channel just days before Valentine's Day. Every major brand of chocolate, every major producer of chocolate ranked high on the study. Major chocolate companies and producers who chocolate contain high amount of rat, rat feces and Coon, Persis, Nessa, Carnation, Mars, they rank number one in the amount of rat feces in their brand of chocolate. They can't get it out. They cannot get the rat feces and rat hair out of the chocolate. So what the food inspectors have allowed a certain amount, because they said that won't hurt you. And here's many of the foods, uh, candy, treats that we eat every day, and they all are saturated with animal feces and animal byproducts. What, why is this important? For those who claim to bleed the truth, ought to guard carefully the power of the body and the mind. So we got to be on, be on guard against our body and our mind so that God and his cause would not be in any way dishonored by their words or action. The habits and practice ought to be brought into subjection to the will of God. So I don't care how great that temptation is, you should what? Submit yourself to the will of God. We ought to give careful attention to our diet. We got to stop eating and thinking about it later. It has been clearly presented to me that God's people ought to take firm stand against meat eating. And that's what we're doing. I, I do it in love, I do it in compassion, but we got to come up much higher than we find ourselves today. God for 30 years give his people the message that if they desire to have pure blood, clean mind, they must give up the use of flesh meat. Now, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So if you're sick, you got bad quality of blood. In order to have good blood, you had to have what taking good nourishment. If he did not want them to heed this message by the use of flesh meat, the animal nature is strengthened and the spiritual nature is weakened. The more we consume these abundable flesh meats and other denatured, demineralized, devitamized foods, we are weakening not only our physical, but our spiritual nature. 
The need of the system can be better supplied and more vigorous health can be enjoyed without its use. Grains and fruits and nuts and vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good blood. These elements are not so well, are so fully supplied by flesh diet. So you eat, when you eat flesh food, you are robbing yourself of the nourishment. The animal ate the nourishment, and now we turn around and eat the animal. We're getting a second class, God-like first class citizen. By the use of flesh meat, the animal nature is strengthened. The reason we're having so many problems and the reason our families are so dysfunctional, the reason why there are so many divorces and so many unhappy homes is there is an added ascendancy to that. By the use of flesh meat, the animal nature is strengthened and the spiritual nature is weak. Such men as you who engage in the most solemn and important work have entrusted the human being need to give special heed, special heed to what they eat. In other words, God wants us to pay close attention to what we put in this body because it can have spiritual and physical consequences. The thought of killing animals to be eaten <clears throat> is in itself revolting. If man nature, our natural senses, had not been perverted by the indulgent of appetite, human beings would not think of eating the flesh of animals. But see, we have been so inundated with it. And, and it's, it has lost its sting. I mean, really, it's, it is now more attractive to eat it. It used to be. And we'll know, get off the team. See doing that. That's helpful. If things were as they should be in the household, that make up our churches, we might do double service for the Lord. The light given me is that a most decisive message must be born in, born in regard to health reform. Those who use flesh meat strengthen their Lord propensities and prepare the way for disease to fasten upon them. If you believe in the word of the Lord through the inspiration of Ellen White and the Bible, when you use flesh meat, you are simply preparing a way for disease. There are those among Seventh-day Adventists who will not heed the light given them in regard to this matter. They make flesh meat a part of their diet. Disease come upon them, sick and suffering as a result of their own wrong courses. And now when they get sick, they come up for all to pray for them pastors and the elders and the mothers to pray for them, and the whole church is in sympathy for them. They ask for prayer of the servants of God. But how can the Lord work in their behalf when they are not willing, willing to do his will, when they refuse to heed the instruction in God to help with them? So I'm just telling you right now, if you expect God to work a miracle of restoration in your life, you must first do the first work. You must make the sacrifice and give it up. Then come and ask prayer and God will bless. I present these matters now because I'm instructed to say to my brethren in the ministry, by intemperate and eating, you disqualify yourself from seeing clearly the difference between the sacred and the common fact. If any man should be propelled to give up flesh, it should be our pastors, our elders, our deacons, those that are leading out in the church. God has put you there as, as captains and leaders to be a representative of the body of God. How can you discern clearly the difference between the sacred and the common fire when you are there to be watchmen over the flock? As long as you hold that position, you should give up the use of animal food and all the nature food. And she go on to say, many who are supported by the tithes from God's storehouse are by self-indulging, poison the life-giving current going through their veins. In other words, God wants to save these ministers. He want to, want to keep them around so they can preach the gospel, so they can be in good health. But you're destroying yourself out of that lust of thieves, a perverted appetite, give it up. 
stop disregarding the light and the warning that God has given during the past 35, 30 years. Some continue to gratify the desire for flesh me. And I'm sure many will hear this and say, well, I ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. God understands. God do not understand disobedience. God understands a contrite and humble spirit. You know, um, there are many that, um, that cannot give up an animal food. They just can't give it up. And God can help them out. He really can, and he will. With Labor Day just around the corner, there are some people getting ready to fire up the grill for an all-American barbecue. But right now, there's a warning for meat lovers. A small but growing outdoor danger could take that away from you. Oh, I know this is where we're going to be. <laughs> what started out as a tick bite in September Norman's front yard nearly took her life weeks later. Played golf, grilled some steaks. At about 2.30 in the morning, I woke up, my hands were on fire. September was going into shock. My tongue and lips okay, started falling to the this. point that I, I could so. barely speak. There's a tick that is on deers and animals here in America. I'm sure it's probably there too. But it is a vegetarian tick. And it's around where I live. And if he bites you, you actually develop a lifetime allergy to eating animal, uh, wild animal flesh meat. And so that's a pretty good thing. You know, they don't bother us because we don't eat it anyway. But meat eaters, if they get bit by these ticks, they cannot eat animal food again. Those who use flesh foods little know what they are eating. Often they could see the animals when living and know the quality of the meat they eat. They would turn from it with loathing. People are continuously eating flesh that is filled with tuberculosis and cancerous germs. Now this young man right here, I had an opportunity to work with him and he had brain cancer and he went and well, they took him and he had uh, radiation to the brain and burned his brain and it paralyzed him. And they brought him to me and I began to work on him when he was paralyzed. He was having grand mal seizures every hour on the hour. So I'm massaging him, trying to get some good blood flowing in his lower extremities. I put him on a parasite cleanse. I suspected he had a lot of worms in him. And so after about three days on a parasite cleanse, we would take him up to his room and we would begin to seek him. We get these worms out of him. So we're going to take him up. You can see on the top of his head where the radiation burned all the hair off the top of his head. This is a young man. So you young people don't think it cannot happen to you. Young people are getting sick just as fast as old people. For some reason, people think that only old people get sick. That is not the case. Now, as we take him up to his room, I want you to see, young people, what we was able to take out of him. And remember now, a lot of us can have this. He's laying in the bed. I have a black trash bag tucked on his backside. I'm reaching into some feces just come out of his rectum, and there's some long white spaghetti looking things was in his feces. That's not spaghetti. That is a worm. That's a parasite. After cleaning him out, killing those worms in him, the grandma seizures stopped. I was in Malaysia and there I was sitting in a restaurant and I noticed that people was eating all kind of critters and bugs and worms and fried maggots and stuff. And I just could not believe people was eating it. And here's another big bowl of worms and insects eating uh, fried chocolate coated spiders and bugs. This was a bowl of maggots that they was eating. 
And they told me that it tastes like potato chips. But yet, God has given us fruits, grains, and nuts, and vegetables. These guys constitute what we need to prepare us for a better life, even a kingdom. Hamburgers and french fries, it's a dead food. It's for dead people. Mm. Let us eat alive foods today. If we continue to eat these foods, we're going to end up with these types of problems. And then <clears throat> we can claim this promise that God has given to all of us. And he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thou God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. So God has promised he would keep these diseases from us if we would keep his commandments and his statutes. We're supposed to be commandment-keeping people, but we're inundated with diseases. Something is wrong. And until we make decisive changes, we will continue to have problems. Now take a listen to this right here. Eat meat, inspected under the new well, government uh, program. We don't want people to eat what we wouldn't eat. You wouldn't eat the product that you're producing? No, I would not. Yourself? Yeah. Oh, these oh, are and they are stepping it through grade eight inspectors, but they're saying they will not eat the meat that they stamp healthy for the public to eat. If they won't eat it, then we have no business to eat. Federal meat inspectors angrily condemned as unfit for human consumption hundreds of thousands of animals, but uh, yeah, but it ended up on our table here. They're called downed animals, an industry term for livestock so sick or so weak they can no longer stand. These startling pictures were taken at East Coast stockyards where downed animals were pulled by ropes off trucks. Suffering broken bones, internal injuries, and often dying in transit. But in God's mercy and giving us liberty, He makes this statement. We do not mark out any precise land to be followed and die. But we do say that where there are fruits, uh, grains, nuts, and abundance, flesh food is not the right food for God's people. I have been instructed that flesh food has a tendency to animalize the nature, to rob men and women of their love and sympathy, which they should feel for, for everyone, and to give the lower passion control over the higher power. And so God said that there's no precise line that we have to follow, but in countries where there's abundance of fruits grains and nuts, flesh food is not the food for God's people. And I believe there in England, you have plenty of fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. It's not time that we give it up. Many times we continue to eat it because we don't feel it. It don't hurt me. It don't bother me. Listen to what she said. <clears throat> the effects not immediately realized. <clears throat> the effects of a flesh diet may not be immediately realized. But this is no evidence that it's not harmful. Few can be made to believe that it is the meat they have eaten which have poisoned their blood and caused their suffering. Many die wholly due to meat eating, while the real cause is not suspected by themselves or by others. They end up with arthritis, they end up with cancer, and they say, well, it runs in my family. Oh, they got many other excuses, but few will recognize or testify it has been their improper diet and lifestyle that has brought this condition upon them. I think this is a good statement here. This doctor asked Ellen White this question. Doctor asked me if under any circumstance, I would advise 
the drinking of chicken broth if one was, was sick and could not take anything else into the stomach. Now listen to what she said. I said, there are persons dying of consumption who, if they ask for chicken broth, should, should have it. But I would be very careful. The examples should not injure the sanitarium or make excuses for others to think their case required the same diet. So this woman was real sick and real weak, and she said nothing was still in my stomach, but a little chicken broth, and she said that be very careful with this, because people would use this, and many people would use that to continue to uh, get animal, uh, animal food. And she continued, I asked Doc, if she, if, if she had such a case in the sanitarium, she said no. But I have a sister in the sanitarium who is very weak. She has weak sinking spell, but cook uh, chicken. Uh, in other words, she wanted, to, she wanted to eat some chicken, but I said it would be best to remove her from the sanitarium. The light given me is that if the sister you mentioned would brace up and cultivate her taste for wholesome food, all the sinking spells would pass away. In other words, she won an excuse to eat this chicken broth and said it would be best to remove her from the sanitarium because you're going to what? Degrade it and it will have a horrible reputation of serving meat in our facilities. Look at what these animals go through. that have on human nature to kill these little birds. You know, this is one that's worthy of consideration. You know, I remember when I was young, we was told to go to the market and buy a dozen of eggs. We bring the eggs back and they would crack it open and make some scrambled eggs and a half developed baby chick would be a blood would be and you know, you say, well, I just can't eat that. Have you noticed that you don't find undeveloped baby chicken and eggs today? It's unheard of. The reason is, it's not an egg. It looked like an egg, it tastes like an egg, but it's not an egg. It is a counterfeit, it is an amalgamation. They do not use roosters and hens to make eggs anymore. They simply give the hens uh, the uh, byproducts of the baby roosters and the chicken feed and feed that with them, which is hormone stimulated, and they can cause the female chickens to produce eggs without the service of a rooster. And it's an infertile egg. And that's why we're not getting any benefit. If it's the quality of life that's really at stake. The undesirable effects of the American diet are most apparent in the last 10 or 20 years of life when heart disease and cancer can make life really miserable. And the effects of poor eating habits can be measured not just in terms of human suffering, but look at the astronomical the health care costs in this country. And so we, as a people, can make drastic changes it's going to get worse.
Look at the future of Dyer. Is this the shape of food to come? Most Westerners would be disgusted at the idea of this being a staple food, but for many in the third world, bugs and creepy crawlies already are. Now the World Food Organization's suggesting that due to pressure on water resources, arable land and the threat of climate change, we may all have to reconsider insects in the future and tuck in. Well, insects are very nutritious. Uh, they have a high content of protein and minerals yeah, and fats. So they, they got all this figured out. They send it this good source of protein, it's got good nutrients and so on. I mean, they got it all figured out. But God has already figured it out. We are not to eat these creepy crawlers. But they won't hear the word of the Lord, so we're subsisting on the life of these animals. Those who claim to believe the truth are to God carefully the power of the body and the mind so that God and his cause will not in any way be dishonored. And so God wants us to glorify him. And so he wants us to represent him to the world. But if we continue to eat things that God has not sanctioned, we will continue to bring disgrace on him. And some parts of Europe, Europe, they eat bull testicles. They said to give them strength and stamina. And so men have all kind of ideas why he should and what he should eat. Now, I spent some time in Asia, and I observed some of the things that they eat. And I want you to look at, listen to this. Uh, this is a menu from one of the menus uh, in their restaurant. Cat fried rice, cat drop soup, cat drop cat, cat plant kitty, cat, cat means pepper cat, uh, cat chow mein. And then for the vegetarian, they had tofu cat. So uh, this is typical and there's nothing offensive about it because it's a part of some of their culture. This is not to say that all Asian people eat this way, but it's an acceptable menu in many of them. Dogs are eaten just like chicken and ducks and cows and so on. And they're caged up and they're taken back and they're slaughtered just like any domestic or farm ant creature. Their skin and their skins are cooked in grease and made uh, chewable uh, dog skin out of it, uh, a pig skin. And here these animals are slaughtered and put on a table and people come by and pick them and pick out a whole slab of, of these animals as a you know wonderful meal. And it's not offensive to them to see somebody cleaning up a big juicy rat, it's not offensive to them, it's just good eating. So every culture seems to have their own slant of what's good and what's bad. But how can we tell what's good and bad? We can only tell by what the word of God has said. And that's a whole plate of filet rats. They cut them up, they make a stir fry out of it, make it taste like barbecue, and so on. And so as I get ready to bring this to a close, um, all this is leading us somewhere. It's leading us to cannibalism. When they uh, dismembered the body for, uh, for consumption, uh, they said they ate everything, every part of it except the gallbladder, which was too bitter. So they, uh, they ate the flesh, they ate the innards, they ate most of the bones. <laughs> The bones weren't too hard. They were easy to break with a stone. And then they were mixed with vegetables and eaten. They didn't eat all bodies. They buried some and ate some. But there was no sense uh, that we get from other areas in the world where people speak about their notions of spirit incorporation or acquiring some abilities of the deceased person. So they, uh, they just talked know, about it, that it was just delicious, it was just good.
but a disease developed from that. Although the whole society approved of the funeral feasts, it was only the women and children who ate the dead. It was their main opportunity to eat meat, other than frogs and small rodents, as they were normally only allotted a small amount of pork. Men, who customarily ate the prized meat from their pigs, rarely joined the cannibal meal, believing that it was women and children's food and might sap their strength. Young men like me were not allowed to eat. We had to be strong to fight and shoot people, so we had to avoid eating people. Now let's see what effect eating human flesh brought to them. Then they can't stand up. Then they lie in bed, and people come and carry them out and put them in the sun. Then they are taken back inside the house, where they die. Without exception, the disease was fatal. By the late 1950s, it would have been hard to find a village unaffected by Kuru. The first outside witnesses noticed the smiling grimace that many of the victims wore. In they call words, it the laughing death. The protein from human flesh, they developed some type of mental disorder, similar to Alzheimer's. As they incorporate this protein, it had a tremendous reaction in the body. A similar thing can take place when we eat animal protein. And I believe that that's why the acceleration of Alzheimer's and senility is growing more and more today. Continue to listen. The foray named the disease after their word for shivering. They called it Kuru. Now, By the time the of Shirley walking, Lindenbaum's... He's walking like a Parkinson patient. So the central nervous system involvement also there. And I believe that all of this is introducing a foreign protein in the body. God never intended for his people to eat animal protein or human protein. It's having a devastating effect on them. And look what happened after they stopped. They predicted. Changes in the pattern of the disease were noted by Dr. Michael Alpers. When we looked at the change, even over this relatively short period, um, there had been a, uh, a dropout of young cases in the, in the uh, latter period. And it looked as if those who were born since 1959 were growing up free of the what disease. The country so prohibit them from eating human flesh. This devastating disease called Kuru was stopped in its tracks. And these people were able to grow up healthy. I believe by the grace of God, if we stop eating animal-based food, denatured, devitamized food, that we can be a reflection of what God wants. I believe that we can stand free from disease, and I believe that God will be glorified. And I believe the world will be coming to us to ask us, how have we achieved such high level of good health and mental awareness? This is the standard by which God has laid for his people. The Advent people are special called people. They are not people regularly called from the world. They are people that are set aside to do a special work. God is trying to do what he did with Adam. God created Adam a perfect man. God is trying to recreate us after the similitude of Adam before the fall. If that be the case, then we must dress right, we must eat right. We must worship right. We must do what the Heavenly Father did. He gave his only begotten son that we may be saved. And I believe that we must give something to the Father. We must give up our perverted attitude. 
and render a reasonable service to God. It is not a fair exchange, but at least it's an attempt to show our appreciation of God, how dare any of us continue to fill our system and our belly with this an abomination when ye are the temple of God. And God is bringing us into the atonement, the atonement, and these last days, it behooves God's people to make drastic changes, especially as we are inundated now with all these pestilence and disease that are coming upon us. If our immune system is weakened, we will be victims. We'll be victims. But if we will follow God's divine plan, we can be victorious. May God bless you and strengthen you and find ways, be creative, find ways to wean your family members off of this life-destroying habits and regain the spiritual strength of giants. Remember Elisha, he outran uh, a chariot of horses. Remember the wisdom of Moses. Remember God wanna restore the mental, spiritual, and physical health back to his people. May God bless you and keep you and thank you. Amen.